part two. For I say unto liberating oppressors, there are two ways to conquer and enslave my nation. One is by the sword, and the other is by debt. For I say unto you, it would be easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. The rose has long been the flower of love. Its beauty and its thorns remind us of the mixed blessing we receive when we open ourselves to love. James Dean offered American audiences a new image of the rebel as poetic anti-hero, as the misunderstood but vulnerable, herald of a new generation, the boy in anguish as a disturbed animal, so in need of love that nothing else has any reality. In one hand, I offer you something like Marlon Brando saying, fuck you, and I'm Montgomery Clifton, the southern one saying, Please help me. My ultra-violent, Cesare Borgia-like pen is recklessly wielding other people's quotes, but A. Alice Bailey criticized national groups based on what she believed were their violations of the spirit of unity and brotherhood. She believed that an individual's primary allegiance is to humanity and not to any subgroup within it. I'll save that shit for another day. A million superficial differences divide us. There is no such thing as being civilized, and nothing is solid. We emerge out of the bright darkness into the view of some yaza, singing the songs that were once composed in honor of pagan gods. Limp demand, divine abomination standing strong with weak erection, shouting, love has to be reinvented, like Rimbaud recommended, life must be changed. A whole generation of kids cursed by narrow consciousness, are being exposed to things their dipsomaniacal parents, spoon-feeding said children to Moloch, the government blob, and the boar will never know, circles and sheets of sound, musical noise, girls gone wild, elderly women going mad, war pigs getting awarded a Nobel Peace Prize, banksters head scratchingly named Time Magazine's Person of the Year, year, thousand-year-old prophecies of mass destruction, or global awakening, alien or deity intervention, or nothing. The ending of an aeon and the beginning of another, even the priestess Pythia, the oracle of Apollo at Delphi, and my old friend Susan Monroe don't know what's going to happen. What a strange and exciting time to be stuck in existence. Thank you.